Hello and welcome to today's Restful Beginners Painting class. If you haven't taken a class with me before or maybe you need a refresher, this class, this type of class, is not about perfection or achievement or taking something off the box. Instead, it is all about rest and growth and skill building. Here for the next hour, we are going to set aside all of our stressors and we're going to dwell on a beautiful piece of cilantro and study its shapes and lines and colors and mix them all together. So I am excited for this class. I'm glad you've chosen to join me. If you can, before we get started, go ahead, like this video, subscribe to my channel, click that bell. It'll help you to get notified whenever I make new classes and it'll help you to grow this channel. Let's get into our class. I'm going to show you the supplies that we need. And if you want to, you can just pause me, get everything together, and then we'll get started. All right, so for supplies today, we typically use a primary paint palette. So that means you'll need your blue and your yellow paint. Now, normally we would add red, but there really isn't any red in cilantro. So we're just going to leave that in the tube today and then have some white out for mixing. You're also going to need a surface to paint on. I'm using this thick grade watercolor paper. You'll need a pencil to draw with. You'll need a paintbrush that's about the size of your pinky nail with a flat top. And then you'll need a rag to dry off on, some water for rinsing in between, and then of course get yourself a little treat, something good to eat, something good to drink. Today I have an Earl Grey tea latte, which I'm excited about. So if you want to go ahead, get your supplies together, get your snacks together, and get everything that you want ready, just pause this video and whenever you're ready, just push play. Okay, so the first thing that we do in every class is we observe what we are drawing. And today we are drawing some sad, floppy cilantro. It's definitely at the end of its shelf life. Um, but yeah, so we're going to observe this real fast if I can get some flattened out for you. So at first glance, you see a lot of straight up circles and blobs. But when you look a little closer, you see that there are three individual leaves. Let me separate one for you. So there are three individual leaves on each of these. So you see these three segments. I'm trying so hard to show you. There you go. So you can see, you see these three kind of segments coming out. So they start off small and then they V out and then you have three loops. On each of these also, we have fingers coming off of the loops. So it's kind of got a, like a fingered effect on each of these. We've got one primary stalk that's coming down with a nice lime green with a light highlight. And then the leaves themselves are darker than the stalk. So what I've done right here is I've just made a composition that I think is pretty, but you of course can always change it up. Just follow the rules that I'm kind of describing and make whatever composition you want. But if you want to just follow along with exactly what I'm doing, you can do that as well. So now that we have observed what we are drawing, we're going to start off with our pencils and draw our basic shapes out. So I will warn you, this is my second attempt at this. So I drew this out and painted it for a full class period last week trying to get ahead and I just did not like the finished product and that happens sometimes. So I decided I would rather go ahead and reshoot it and retry a different technique and so that's what we're going to do today. So starting off we're going to draw out our stems and get that main line together. So for composition's sake I'm saying that those are good. So let's start off with this top center one and it's starting right around the center of the composition come down a little bit, maybe, what is that, about a fourth of the way, and we're just going to curve it down. So start in the middle, and nice and easy, make that curve, and bring it in. It doesn't have to be exact, it doesn't even have to be close. We're just going to get the main elements of what makes cilantro cilantro, and then we're going to make it pretty. So. Let's go ahead and draw this one coming down. So it sharps pretty, it curves pretty sharply. So I'm going to start out right here. So on the page, that's about a third of the way down. So this one is about a fourth. This comes to about a third. So a third of the way down, cuts sharply over. A really pretty composition. And you see, I'm kind of going lightly at first to get my sketch on there. And then I'll come back and harden it. So I'm just getting that shape on. And then we're going to add this guy right here in. So 
it'll start right about the same place this comes in, maybe a little bit lower, and then just have him pop up like this. Alrighty, that looks good. So what we're gonna do with each of these is we are gonna draw out our V's. So start at the top of this one, draw your V. Straight up little V. And then from that, we are going to draw our individual threes. So I'm going to do that guy. I'll do the center one. He's going to overlap some. So the center one coming out. And then I'm going to draw the third one. He can overlap some and then come back in. Okay, so that's my shape for the first one. Then we come down just a little bit, and we have a little bit of a stem, and then we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna draw my V, and then I'm gonna do a little teardrop coming in, a larger teardrop in the center, overlapping, and then another one coming in. So it can either be like a, I think a teardrop or a fan. Like this shape right here is more like a fan, this one's more like a teardrop. We're just getting that shape where it starts off small and then it kind of folds. And we're going to add in the fingers when we're painting. So that's that one. Let's do this one right here. It starts at about the same place. And we're doing the same thing. We're going to draw our V to start off with. Then add that little teardrop. Add the larger one in the center. And then add the third one. And it's good for it to overlap with the other ones. It makes it look more natural. Okay, so that's a start. So I'm going to bounce down to this one right here right now. I'm doing a little bit of a stem. My V. Teardrop. I'll do the outside teardrop. And then I'll do my middle hand shape. Then we'll come over here. I'll do my fan at the base, and then that guy, that guy, and that guy, and then I'll do one here. So you see, it's really simple what we're doing. It really does not require any exactness on your part. It's okay if they overlap. It's actually beneficial if that's the case. It's good if these all look a little bit different because in nature it will look different. So we are playing into that effect. So if you want to, right here, this one's overlapping and you get the underside of the leaf, which is a lighter color, which I like. So I'm gonna add that detail in, but you can always just choose to not freak yourself out with any overlapping and you can just bump this detail down but I'm gonna do mine coming over top, and then I'm gonna erase, after I draw it, I'm gonna erase the lines inside. So I'm gonna have to remember which lines are which. Okay, so now I'm going back in, and I'm erasing so that I don't mess up later everything that I think this leaf is covering. But like I said, if that freaks you out, if you don't want to do any overlapping, don't worry yourself with it. Don't let that be a stressor for you. Just drop that leaf down or don't add it at all. That's totally fine too. This is supposed to be restful. Don't do things that freak you out. All right, let's come to this one right here. So there are two, one's back, one's front. Once again, you don't have to overlap them, but I think it'll look nice if you do. So we'll draw the back one first. Line one, the middle guy, and the other guy. And I'm just not gonna finish him because I know that I'm gonna add the other one right now. So I'll add this other line coming out in my V. And I'll do the one guy, the second guy, and the third guy. I'm gonna have mine overlap with the stem. are doing great. Just stick with me. So this one right here is a little bit bigger. So 
everything's nice and pretty. So add your V at the end. Number one. Number two. And number three. Good job. We've got two more left. I'm gonna start that a little bit further down. Add your V. Number one. Number two. And number three. And our last one is coming over and is overlapping with that one stem, which I like. So bring that over almost horizontally. Add your V. Number one. Number two number three. All right y'all, so that is our drawing completed. So you can put those pencils down, take a sip of your drink, take a quick little pause. Mm. Y'all, I love Earl Grey. That's one of my favorite things. Okay, so now we are going to move on to painting and we're going to start off with painting our stems. So for this color, we're going to do a darker lime green first and then we're gonna do a lighter lime green. So what you can see right now is I am not mixing all of my color together, right? I'm just dragging and pulling together little bits of blue, little bits of yellow, until I get the color that I like. Think of it like salt to taste or adding heat step by step whenever you're cooking. So you just wanna keep dragging a little bit back and forth until you get the color you like and that's gonna save you time and it's also kind of save you frustration, but more importantly, it's gonna save you paint and it's gonna keep you from going through a ton of paint and having a bunch of waste at the end of it. So here is this pretty lime green that I've got. I'll show you in just a second. So for this one, I am not adding any white to it. So I'm just doing the true color. So here's the lime green that I've got. Now I've just mixed with this brush so I need it to be flat whenever I'm working on the stems. So I'm gonna fold it up in my thing, my rag, there it is, and pull. And that's gonna give me a nice sharp line. So another trick that we've talked about many times but it's always good to repeat is I'm going to plant my wrist on the surface of my painting. And I'm gonna use my hands in the same exact distance dragging my wrist along the paper so that my fingers aren't bearing any weight. And that's going to keep my line from smudging and changing sizes as I go, right? So that's going to allow me to just slowly drag and have a nice, sharp, smooth line by not putting any weight on my brush except what is necessary to touch the paper and pull, okay? So we've got our nice flat brushes. We're gonna plant our wrists on the surface and we are gonna drag with our elbows and our shoulders. So just dragging your fingers along, not moving your fingers at all, not moving your wrist at all, just drag it along the page. Nice and steady. Obviously pay attention to where things are overlapping and where your stem is going behind. Right here, you can see I did not cover all of my pencil marking. That's okay. I'm gonna leave that there. I'm not gonna thicken my line up because I can always go back and erase that pencil mark later. I can do other things with it later, but I wanna make sure that this green line is nice and sharp. So don't freak yourself out if you've got some pencil lines showing. All right, and do the same wherever you have some stems. I'm gonna drag this long guy. And you can see my fingers are not moving. I am keeping them as stable as possible. Y'all are doing great. And go ahead and hit the little stems that are going up to your V's. Already, this is looking so much better than my first draft. So let this be an encouragement to all of you who maybe don't love your first draft, 
that's okay. I don't always love my first draft either. That's what second drafts are made for. Don't give up on it, just if you don't like it, either one, let it dry and fix it, or two, just take this opportunity to learn, try different techniques out, get familiar with the feeling of the paint and your brushes, and then next time you can come at the painting with a lot more know-how and a lot more confidence. Okay, so that is our low light that we've just finished. So this is what mine looks like up close. Nice and simple. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of white and we're gonna add a dimension to the stem. So grab a little touch of your white and blend it in with that color that you've just mixed. Now my paint is getting a little bit thick, so what I'm gonna do is take, dip it in water and then mix that in with it. So that's just gonna make it a lot more fluid, it's gonna make it glide a lot more easily and keep it from sticking as I try to drag this color on. So I'll show you what color it is in just a second. So here's that color now. So you can see this one, the white just adds some density to it, some opacity to it. And it's also just gonna add just a touch of that highlight. Whenever you're done, make sure that you flatten your brushes out. So sandwich it between your rag and pull and get that nice sharp line. So now I'm not gonna pick a side because we did this last class where I tried to pick a side and this is just such a small stem to where you're probably not gonna be able to keep it exactly in the right place the whole time. But gliding along these lines that you've already painted, we're gonna add this highlight to it. I'm gonna try and stick to the left side, left to center, but it really doesn't matter. And you don't even have to add it everywhere. Now, right here, I have a crossover of stems, and so I'm gonna have to choose which one's on top and which one's on bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that this one right here, that line is on top, which means I'm gonna break up my highlight and skip right there, so that way it doesn't look like, I don't know, it keeps the effect looking right. So, and this highlight is really only visible in person but realistically, you're gonna be looking at your painting in person, so it's totally worth the effort. Just be careful not to drag your wrist across wet paint. We've all done it. We can all tell a story about how we've messed up a painting that way, but try not to do that on this painting. If you do, remember you can always wait five minutes for it to dry and then add a leaf there, or you can just paint over it in white. You have many options, but don't freak out and don't throw the painting away over one little smudge. Alrighty, this is looking good. I love a little three-dimensional highlight. So I'm just touching on each of these stems. Alrighty. And so I'm gonna go ahead while I had this color mixed and I'm gonna hit this, the leaves that are a little bit lighter, the ones that are showing the back. So on my page, that's this one, this one, this one, and this one. So you can kind of see it where you're looking, but it's these four right here. So if you want to join me in having some of your leaves face the back, we are just going to do a bottom layer, a first coat with this lighter color. Be careful to just remember where your lines are. So if you have gaps in between these leaves, try and hold on to them. And remember that your main priority is always the outer edge. So don't worry too much about the inside being exact, but try and get that outer edge nice and sharp.
don't forget, we are going to go back and add those little fingers on later. We're just not doing it just yet. I'm going too quickly for you if I'm kind of rushing past some of the paintings just remember just push the pause button get caught up and then continue on you do not have to try and paint at my speed that is not restful that is not joyful just paint at your own speed pause me when you need to that is totally fine so we're gonna go ahead I'm gonna mix this darker color for our leaves so for this I'm gonna keep it in this section and just keep adding it's going to be a much bluer green than the other two colors Obviously, you can see my brush is very gunky, so I am going to need to rinse it off and flatten it. So, sandwich and pull. Look at that, nice sharp line. So now we're going to take this color and we're going to fill in all these other ones with that first layer. I just got a lot of paint on my page faster than I meant to, but you're just going to work with it. And if you need to add a little water to make your paint a little bit more fluid, the more you do this, the more you're going to recognize what your comfort moment is and when you want more, more water mixed in. So you'll get the hang of it. You'll figure out what your balance is. I think everyone has a different comfort level. Try to be smart about where you're putting your paint so that you're not dipping your paintbrush or dipping your wrist in wet paint. But at the same time, know that you can always flip your paper around. So that's an option. Don't feel trapped if you have gone all in one line and now you're trying to avoid getting your hands stuck in paint. So I'll do that right now. Also remember this is layer one, so there is really no pressure in this layer. It is going to get covered up. Sorry about that, my recording just stopped out of nowhere. Hopefully it's not too. too jarring.
So that is my first layer all finished. Now I'm gonna start looking towards that second layer. So I'm actually gonna start, I'm gonna continue on with my darker color, just because it is the back color. So like with these two right here and these guys right here, my darker color is behind the light colors. And so I don't wanna deal with that overlap later. And so it's easier if we just stick with the darker color for now. And you can see right here, I'll show you. Like right here on mine, I'm sure you're noticing the same thing with yours. You can see through this layer of paint. It kind of looks a little messy. So that's why we do a second layer. So that way we don't have that kind of transparent moment where it looks like cheap paint. So we're gonna mix some more color. It's gonna be slightly lighter. So if you are like me and you ran out of paint color, just mix some more. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow this time. And a touch of white. if you need to. So now we're going to address our little fingers that are coming off. So I'm going to come over to this guy first and I'm going to start in the center and just pull down. little edges and pulling down just popping and pulling Drop. we want them to be rounded edges not pointed edges so kind of be mindful of that and then these sides are flat so continue on accordingly and then mine goes behind here so I am pulling down this color but I'm not covering everything. So let's do another one. Remember, this is the dark color, so we're gonna be in the, dark, the darker leaves as we do this. Watch for wet paint. Rotate if you need to. Saying they're not perfectly done, they're kind of clustered together. So you can do this side comes out a little bit too. You can play with that accordingly. And then we have that flat line. So here's this up close. I'll let it focus. So you can see I've added those little made a mess right there I'm gonna have to fix that but I've added the little fingers coming out they're rounded edges and then I just pull the paint color in as I go so let me fix that spot that I messed up all right continuing on yeah make sure you pull that paint color down but don't cover over everything from that first layer so coming over to this side we're doing the same thing still. So I'm gonna start with the side leaf and it has those fingers coming off all around it. If you ever need some extra water to kind of make it more fluid, don't forget to grab it. If you need to mix more paint color, mix more paint color. We're just going around.
this is so much better than my first draft. I'm pretty sure I threw that away, but if I can find it, I'll let you. I'll post it to my stories or something so y'all can see it. So with this one right here, I am, you can see right here that it wants to branch out a second time, or maybe you can't, um, but it kind of, you have your, your fan, and then the fingers themselves are going out one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm playing with that element on this bigger leaf because this is the first one where you can really see that. So I'm just grouping my little fingers that are coming off into threes as well. And then pulling that paint color in. Flatten your brush if you need to. If you're noticing that it's getting a little bit too chunky for you, just flatten it out. We are almost done with this dark color. about y'all but I am always mixing up cilantro and parsley in the grocery store so maybe we should do like a parsley class coming up so we can really observe the the minute details that differ between our cilantro and our parsley that's something I always have to check the label because I don't trust myself to pick the right one the first time this up closer for y'all so you can see what that looks like nice and simple we're gonna do that lighter color next I washed off my brush I'm flattening it just because it had gotten so gunky so now I'm gonna mix primarily yellow and white See what color I get. So adding a little bit of blue. We're looking for that much lighter green. the color I've just mixed. Flattening that brush out. So now we're going to do the same exact thing on these lighter ones. And I'm varying up. I'm not doing a perfect circle going around, right? I'm varying the levels of these so that they kind of show a little bit of variation. And then I pull that color in. Not everywhere, just kind of brushing it in. Yeah, y'all, this is so much better than my first draft. 
Oh, if y'all could see it. Okay, so now that this is overlapping, we're gonna get to see some of the real beauty of that overlap if you chose to go that route. So just be confident and go over the top of the green, make sure it's overlapping as it comes out. That should be a really nice effect. Just pull that color in. Now this one, interestingly, the kind of fringe goes all the way around until right here and right here. So I'm going to play with that. Just keep adding. And you'll remember, sometimes it might seem stressful as you go to the outside edges and you start to feel more perfectionistic about things, but these are just lines that we are dropping our paintbrushes and pulling them in and adding that little bit of a ruffle. Y'all remember, I've said this so many times, but there is no perfection in nature. There is no perfect symmetry that happens naturally. So just let these things, let these leaves evolve as they evolve and know that every imperfection makes it look more realistic. So now that we have this whole underbody, the, how do you say, <laughs> the first layer, that's what it is. Now that we have the whole first layer done on the painting, we're gonna go ahead and add in a little bit more detail and just fill in the gaps. So as we were doing that first layer, you might have had some gaps where you can still see through the paper here and there. Now we are just filling that in and making sure that the whole thing is nice and solid in color. You can even start to go ahead and mix some other colors. If you want to lighten this up a little bit, you can add some white, um, lighten that tone up, and it'll add a little bit more depth to your leaves. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, yeah, so you can add a little bit more depth to your leaves that way. And just remember, each time you mix, the colors are gonna come off a little differently, and that is okay. That's even a goal. Try to make them a little bit different. The more color variation we have in these leaves, the more realistic and full of depth they're gonna look. So have some fun with your color mixing. Just try to get in the general vicinity, not changing the colors. Keep the dark ones dark, the light ones light, but mix as you will and don't worry about there being slight changes in the colors. And y'all also, we've talked about this, but as you need to, if you need to mix a little bit more water in with your colors to make them more viscous, more fluid, um, you know how your paints are behaving. So if you need to do that, just dip your brush in the water and blend it out that way. Otherwise, keep going. And you'll get a feel for that the more you do. just about finishing up here I could piddle with this and play with this for ages but I think this is about at a good spot where I'm happy with it so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to call this finished for now if you want to pause me please feel free to pause me otherwise we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you an optional upgrade for adding the word cilantro at the base just down here in the middle so pause me if you need to to finish up Otherwise, we are gonna continue on and write cilantro at the bottom and finish it up. Okay, y'all, so for our optional upgrade, we're gonna do the same thing that we did with our dill class and our rosemary. So you see we added this really pretty font at the base of both of these. They both match, they're the same font. And so we are gonna do the same thing with this one. And my cheat for how to do this is that I have printed off a font that I like. This one's Academy Engraved LET, 53 points if you want to do the same thing as me. Um, and I am now placing it at the center of my painting and just getting it exactly where I want it. And this way I get to eyeball exactly what it's gonna be before I actually commit to it on the page. So I can see the stem through here. And so I am centering it along the stem and just kind of eyeballing where I want it. 
So this is where I want it. I'm taking an ordinary ballpoint pen and this allows me to bear down hard and write without any ink bleeding through. So the goal of this is to have an indentation that comes along the page afterwards. So just trace it gently, trace it hard, and just get it just right and make sure you're accurate. Take your time. Okay, so that is on there. You will not probably be able to make out that detail. You kind of can. So you can see right there the indentation of cilantro. So now I am going to take a artist pen, an artist marker, but you can take a sharp, like a pointed sharpie or a gel pen that you really like, and I'm going to carefully trace the letters out that I have made the indentation for. Okay, so after you are done with that, just go back through and now that you're done tracing it, just touch up any letters that need just an end to meet or anything like that. So just go back through and touch up any areas that didn't go just quite right. Okay, so that is the finished piece for me. I am really happy with it. Here is how my name turned out, and then here is the painting as a whole. So this has been fun. I am much happier with this the second round. If you don't love yours yet, that's totally fine. Just take a break from it, come back to it later. That sometimes helps a lot. And if you have decided that this is unredeemable, then come back, take the same class again later, and you'll find that you're a lot quicker to get the tricks and to remember the mistakes you made this time and fix them for next time. So I hope you've enjoyed this time. I hope you enjoy the rest of your painting time if you're not done yet. And I'm just glad that you joined me. That is all for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you need to do this again, go ahead, go back to the start and do it again. If you want to keep piddling and working on your painting, keep doing that as well. Please leave comments if you have any questions or find me over on Instagram. I'm a little bit more responsive over there because I check it more often. Um, but as you're finished, if you're pleased with your picture, I would also love it if you would DM me a picture of what you've made or if you're feeling bold, post it and use the hashtag lovely things to come. That way you and everyone else who's in the class can see what everyone's making together, which is just a fun way to build community. Also, before you leave, if you can, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and then click that bell button down there so that you can get notified whenever I make a new video. Again, thank you all for joining me. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and that I see you again soon. Bye.